Um, this is a pre-lab discussion for experiment one. Experiment one is about measurement. We are going to measure mass, volume, density, and boiling point. The experiment or the video for the experiment, it will show you um, what is the what is being done and the following the procedure, the experiment is like clearly showing you what we I have done and uh, you can report your data. But I wanna talk about the, the theory part, what each of these uh, you know, items or properties are. Uh, first of all, like what is mass? Mass is a physical property that measures the amount of a matter in an object. What do you use to measure mass in the lab is called balance or scale. The scale that are used in the lab, we like them to be more accurate. So we do like them with more number of the small places. And I want you to uh, record the uh, all digits that it shows after the zero. So like this decimal, this scale, it shows three decimal place after. If you buy a scale for your kitchen, it would probably show no decimal place or just one decimal place and you buy it cheaper, which is okay for the purpose of using the scale in the kitchen is fine. This balance has a tear button also, which I was going to talk about the tear. Um, if I place anything on the scale and I place the tear, it subtracts the mass of what is in there, on there. If I place like a graduate cylinder here, and uh, right now, and I didn't start with zero, the mass of this uh, goggles that was already in there, it would be subtracted from the mass of the graduate cylinder, and it doesn't show the actual number. So before I place the graduate cylinder, I need to, tear, so it shows zero right now, or I wait until it shows the zero, then I place the graduate cylinder. Now we are starting from zero. The mass that shows now is the mass of the empty graduated um, cylinder. So the tear button is used for that to reset or to zero, and it doesn't count for the object that is already on the on the scale. When we measure the mass, we have different ways of measuring mass. One is direct measurement. So if the object is not corrosive, the object can be placed on the balance band. I would just place the object on the balance, making sure that the balance shows zero. I place the object, I read the mass, and it's going to show me the mass of the, of the object and make sure to record all decimal places for the accuracy and make sure you don't add any decimal place. So if your scale, it shows only two decimal place, you cannot add another decimal place just to say that your scale was, you know, more accurate because that misrepresenting of the equipment you are using or measuring device you are using, we cannot do that. It has to be ethical. It has to be proper. That's why significant figure comes to meaning because you learned that in the first chapter of lecture, uh, it, if you don't apply it, it's kind of, you know, um, not you, in your mind, it would be not necessary or why do you have to learn it? There's, the question is not answered, but when you come to the lab, you see a graduate cylinder, for example, 100 milliliter graduate cylinder, and you see a 10 milliliter graduate cylinder, each one is going to show different accuracy. So significant figure becomes more uh, reasonable and more valuable when you are working in the lab. So the more accurate the measuring device is, more expensive it is, uh, and it gives you more decimal places or more accurate number for your for your measurement. So going back to measuring mass directly, you place the object on the scale, you record the mass, that's direct measurement. Measuring out, in this case, you place an empty container or you place like a rain paper on the scale, you, may, you are going to uh, um, tear, press the tear button, it takes the mass of the, it, it zeroes out the mass of the vein paper. So the mass of the vein paper is not counted. And let's say I wanna measure two grams of sodium chloride. 
which you will see in the video. So what I do, I just add enough sodium chloride until it shows zero. So I'm just measuring out of the container two grams. And that's when it's two grams, I stop. The third method of measurement is measuring by difference. If I want to measure the mass of a liquid, I cannot pour the liquid on the scale. So what I do instead, I'm going to measure the mass of a container. So if I measure the mass of empty graduate cylinder, then I pour five milliliters of the liquid into the uh, graduate cylinder. I measure again, I have the mass for graduate cylinder plus the liquid, then I have a total number. If I subtract it, I get the mass of the liquid. Okay, so that's for three different me methods of measurement for the, uh, for the mass. Now, how would you measure volume? Well, if you're measuring volume of a liquid, we have equipments that we have in the lab. Um, some of them are more accurate than others for measuring the, uh, measuring the volume. Burette, which is the device that is showing in this picture, is very accurate. Pipette is very accurate. Graduate cylinder is somewhat accurate uh, for measuring volume. Uh, and depends if you are using like 100 ml graduate cylinder, these numbers like sh shows between the 100 and 90, you see those numbers, there are like 10 small lines. And when you do your calculation, each one of those small lines, it shows one milliliter. So if the number is between 94 and 95, so you could see that is more than 94, less than 95, and you estimate the last digit. Your last digit is going to be in the 10th place, one decimal place only. When you use a graduate cylinder, this graduate, a 10 milliliter graduate cylinder, this graduate cylinder has, has the uh, lines that it shows like the 10 and nine, 10 and nine, uh, and between that, you have 10 smaller units. So if the level of the liquid is three line higher than or about nine, and it's between 9.3 and 9.4, it's very obvious and you could see that it's more than 9.3 and it's less than 9.4 and you estimate the last digit. Now, when you estimate this digit is going to appear in the hundredth place, which is more accurate. We also have beaker in the lab. It has these numbers, but by no means beaker is not designed for measuring volume because beaker is, is designed to heat sample, to mix the, the mixture of the solution, to transfer from one container to another container. You see this design right here is to, for transfer. Uh, flask, the same thing. It's used for mixing for titration. You will be using it in the lab a lot for mixing and titration, um, but is not for measuring. It gives you approximate number. So these are not accurate equipment for measuring volume. Graduate cylinder is reasonable. Pipette and burettes are the most accurate. When you are measuring uh, liquid, especially if it's water soluble or, or aqueous based liquid, because of the adhesive forces between water and the glass is going to stay in a curve shape, like a curve down. So we do have a meniscus. This image shows the meniscus for this liquid basically is the lowest point of the curve. Your eyes should be at the same level. You don't want to look from the top or from the bottom to read this, um, this uh, level of the liquid. So your eyes should be at the same uh, level as the, the meniscus. So when you are reading the uh, number, you are looking for the, for the meniscus, and this number is the level of the liquid is between 20 and 21. So if you count this a small number lines, you have 10 lines, and that means each line is like 0.1, so if we count down, because this is a burette, the numbers are increasing up, down. That's why you're counting down 20, uh, 25, 26, 27. 
So everybody could see that this level or the meniscus is between 20.7 and 20.8. The number that you are recording, it should be between 20.7 and 20.8. And you estimate the second digit or the second decimal place. And if you tell me this is 20.75, I take it because the five is the estimated digit. But if you say this is 20.8, I will not take that because everyone could see that is less than 20.8, but is more than 20.7. That's why the first three digits here, they are known as the certain digit. Last digit is estimated digit. When you report the number as the result of a measuring or using a measuring device, you should have only one uncertain digit, and that is definition for significant figures. Significant figure is the is a reported number that has only one estimated digit. And if someone wants to be cute and say, okay, this is like 20.7800, because I'm 100% sure that is like, it's closer to 0.8, not 0.7, that would be wrong. That means someone has used like very expensive equipment that shows four decimal places on a measuring device for volume and that is wrong. Your number should have only one estimated digit and that is the number shown on the uh, far right of the, um, the reported number. Now, for a measuring volume of solid, two ways either your solid has uh, has a regular uh, shape and if it's a regularly shaped solid you measure the dimensions if it's a cube let's say you measure the length width and height and you use this math equation to calculate the volume if you have a sphere what do you need? For a sphere, you would need the radius. We actually measure the volume of a sphere, which is a golf ball in this experiment. And you do have a, a uh, equation for that, how to calculate the volume. But just to make sure that you don't have to depend on your math class to calculate that, I include that in the procedure. So when you go to the procedure for the, uh, for the volume, determining the volume of a golf ball, you measure, you cannot measure the radius because it's a sphere and you don't have access to the center of the sphere. But what you could do, you could measure the diameter, divide by two and make it, uh, uh, calculate the radius. And when you have the radius, you use the four over three times pi times r cubed, that give you the volume for uh, for sphere. So if it's geometrically uh, you know, regularly shaped and there is a formula like a cil perfect cylinder, perfect rectangle, perfect cube, um, or anything that you have the equation for, you are using the equation. If not, you would use displacement. What is displacement? You place water uh, like making sure that your object fits into the graduate cylinder, you place like about 40, 50 milliliter, as long as it's enough that the object would uh, sink in or immerse in the water. And the, the object, the solid object would go in and replace the water, the level of the water would go up. You have initial volume, final volume, and you record the difference as the volume of the solid. Liquid, you read it in milliliter, but since solid has cubic centimeter, that's why you're using this equation here that one milliliter equals one cubic centimeter. Because you don't want to say volume of a solid is 10 milliliter. That's not the unit we are using for solid. You would say you would measure in milliliter, but you would express in cubic centimeter. Measuring density, we are not basically measuring density, we are calculating density, but in order to calculate density, we need the mass for the object and we need the volume. So if you know how to measure the mass, you measure for the mass of the object and the volume, you divide, you calculate the density. Density is uh, intensive property. What does it mean? It means that it's not, it doesn't depend on the, the quantity. It doesn't depend on how much of that sample you have. If you take two milliliters of water, the density would be 
one gram per milliliter because you are calculating the ratio. The greater the mass is, the greater the corresponding volume would be. So you are looking at a uh, ratio. So it doesn't matter how much volume you, you take or how much of the liquid you take to measure the density. Other examples is like melting point, boiling point, those are intensive property. If it's not intensive, it would be extensive. That would be like, it doesn't depend on the sample size or the amount of the material. Like if the lab coat is white color, white color, it doesn't, you don't have to see the whole lab coat. You just see part of it and it's white color. As long as you know that it's solid one, one color. Um, that's extensive mass, of course, the greater the amount or bigger piece is going to have larger, uh, larger mass. Uh, density is the mass per unit volume. So if you have like two block exact same size, one is aluminum, one is iron, iron is going to be heavier because the compound is, is more dense and more packed and is going to give you higher density. Um, but whatever it is, is going to be unique from one compound to another compound. So density can be used to identify an unknown sample. So if you have, you find the density of 0.78, we know it's not water because density of water is one gram per milliliter. Or if you have a liquid, you don't know if it's water or not, you find it as the, the density, then you can, based on the density, you can um, you know, find the name for that compound. If it's, uh, if it's too close to something else, then look for other property. The, the point here is not identification. For now, it's just practicing how to calculate density. These are some of the examples of density. So we see like vegetable oil has density less than water and is not miscible in water. When you mix it, it's going to generate two layers. And we know that oil is on top because it has lower and the top layer because it has lower density. If it's miscible with water, you mix it, it would give one layer only. And other examples that you have for the, uh, for the density. Uh, boiling point is the last property that you are going to measure in this lab. What is boiling point? Boiling point is the temperature where uh, vapor pressure of the liquid equals atmospheric pressure, or is the temperature where liquid changes to gas. So you have to increase the temperature until it starts vaporizing, or it goes to the, uh, to the gas phase. So we have the... Uh, Atmospheric pressure, one of the factors that affects the boiling point. Atmospheric pressure, the higher the atmospheric pressure, higher the boiling point. But when someone says normal boiling point, by definition, that is boiling point at one ATM or boiling point at sea level. So if we are comparing uh, for one compound to another compound, boiling point from known to unknown, we have to consider the atmospheric um, atmospheric pressure. The impurities, the sample also needs to be pure. And you can also use the boiling point to identify unknown uh, compound because if you, the two compounds are the same, they are going to have same, um, same boiling point. That's not, this is also a, a physical uh, property that is used in this lab. But um, that's the end of the, um, that is the end of theory for this, uh, for this experiment. And uh, you are going to watch this, of course, it's end of the video, so you have probably watched already. And you are going to um, take the pre-lab quiz, then watch the video for the experiment to complete the data sheet. Thank you.